and welcome to ESB Science Blast TV, delivered by the RDS. I'm John. And I'm Clara, and we are super excited for what's to come because we've taken everything that's great about ESB Science Blast and stuffed it all into this amazing jam-packed TV show. That's right. As you know, ESB Science Blast is all about asking questions about the world around us. And the thing is, the answer to those questions is usually science. And that's because science is everywhere. And in this episode, we'll be finding out about loads of more cool science. We're going to be joined by real-life storm chaser Mark Robinson, whose job is to literally chase tornadoes. And he'll be telling us all about the science of storms and all the different storms he's seen. Plus, we'll be carrying out some great experiments with our science expert, Mark. And not only does he have experiments that you can do too, he also has a very exciting, super-sized experiment outside the RDS, which is larger than life. And certainly, not to be tried at home. Yeah, apparently this is his toughest one yet, so we can't wait to see what he has lined up for us this time. But first, as you know by now, here at ESB Science Blast, investigating questions is what we absolutely love to do. And we're going to do just that. Have you ever thrown something into the rubbish bin and wondered where it goes? Yeah, the bin truck takes it away. No, no, but I mean after that. Where does the waste from different types of bins in your home go? Hmm, yeah, I know there's different types of bins, but I don't actually know what happens to them after they're collected. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, thanks, I know. <laughs> anyway, I've carried out my own investigation to find out the answer. But before we do, what about you at home? Do you know what happens to your waste? Now, as we all know, science is literally everywhere. It's in our schools, it's in our homes, it's even in our rubbish. Yep, our rubbish. Did you know that all the households in Ireland produce 4,100 tonnes of waste every single day? Now, you're probably asking yourselves, how much is 4,100 tonnes? Well, just to put it into perspective for you, 4,100 tonnes is the same as 683 elephants, which is the same as 2,050 cars, which is the same as 66,129 John Sharpsons. Ah, what a beautiful world that would be. Anyway, that's a lot of rubbish. But have you ever wondered where all that rubbish goes? So as you can see, there's rubbish all around us. We're completely surrounded. There's birds on the roof all singing. Katrina, where are we? Okay, John, well, we're here at a waste management facility. There's three different types of waste. There's your general waste bin is typically your black bin. So it's your waste that's not able to be recycled. And what about the brown bin then? The brown bin then is your bin for your organic waste. That's your food waste or your garden waste. So it's things like peelings from your vegetables or your fruit skins. When you're peeling your fruit, you can put it into your brown bin for composting. And finally, Katrina, we have the green bin. What kind of things go into the green bin? OK, so the green bin is your recycling bin with your plastics and your metals and your paper and cardboard. And that's where we are here. That's where it ends up. Well, I never knew where all that stuff that I put in the green bin went. So now it's time to find out more. So what he's doing is he's loading up all the rubbish, he's putting it on top of the conveyor belt, which goes to get sorted. It's pretty cool. So, Liam, what happens here? So, John, this is what we call our pre-sort cabin. It's the pre-treatment of the material before it goes into the rest of the plant to be sorted out. So they're trying to remove anything that shouldn't be in the bin. So just deliberate contamination like nappies, food waste, garden waste, soft plastics, film, um, and anything that could potentially cause damage to the plant, we need to remove as much of it as possible. Paper, plastics, aluminium and steel are what are allowed in the recycling bin. And when we say plastics, what we mean are rigid bottle pots, tubs and trays. So soft plastics are not allowed. So we're trying to separate all of this stuff into stuff that gets turned back into bottles and paper products again. It, nappies and food waste really, really do a lot of harm to, to that process. Yeah, a nappy. After most of the recycling is hand sorted in that room, it comes out here where the machines do the rest of the sorting. This machine uses magnets to separate cans from the rest of the recycling. As they pass through, the cans shoot out so it gets separated nicely. 
This machine is absolutely incredible. It uses small guts of air to separate the plastic from the rest of the material. So we're at the final stage of the recycling process where everything is sorted and put into giant bales. So Katrina, what exactly are these beside us? Okay, so here we have a big bale of aluminium cans that have been crushed and sorted. So these get sent off to a special aluminium smelter and they get broken down to be made into further aluminium products. Similarly with the bottles, they'll be sent off to a plastics company and paper will be sent off to a paper recycling mill and it'll be broken down to be made into further paper products. So it's really, really important that we actually use the green bin and make sure that we're recycling as much as possible because it does end up here and it does get used again. Yeah, it certainly is. It's really important because there's a lot of goodness to be got back from the recyclable materials. So Katrina, let's say I go into a shop, I pick up a can. That could be a can that has ended up here before. It's gotten melted down and it's reused again. Very possibly, very Fantastic. possibly, yeah. Ireland wastes one million tonnes of food every single year. A million tonnes. Now, a lot of that food waste is used as compost, but did you know that there are companies who are constantly trying to find better ways of using that food waste? Have you ever wondered what happens to the food in a supermarket that goes out of date? Often it gets thrown out and could end up in a landfill. But here, they're taking that food and turning it into something really incredible. <laughs> gas. No, seriously, they're taking it and turning it into gas. Now, chances are you already know that food that's gone out of date doesn't smell great. It's a bit stanky. Well, the reason for this is that microorganisms and bacteria are breaking down the food. So they use this process to create a thing called biogas. <laughs> I hope you're hungry. <laughs> so the first thing that happens here is the food is taken from the packaging. Then the food goes into the dome. In the dome, it's broken down and they harness the gas that escapes from it. Then they take that gas and they send it back to our houses. Pretty cool. Now, there is one more clever solution to food waste that I want to show you, but it's a little bit squirmy. These guys could essentially be the future of food waste. Maggots. That's right, maggots. Now, they're essentially baby flies and they feed off human food waste. They're an excellent source of protein and they can be used as pet food or compost. And just this year, Europe has given approval for the consumption of certain types of maggots. So they could be coming to a breakfast table near you. Maybe some maggot salads? Mm, that might be nice, yeah. Or how about some cocktail maggots at a party? So there you have it. Now you know where our rubbish goes. So the next time you're drinking from a can or wrapping your sandwiches in tin foil, or even just sitting on some plastic garden furniture, think there's every chance that what you're using was once a piece of rubbish. I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit smelly, but I have to say I had a great time finding out where our waste goes. And there are still so many questions I'd like to investigate. Like, could there be even better ways to reuse our waste than the methods that we currently use? Or will we ever live in a world where we don't make any waste? And remember, as a class, you too can carry out your own investigations. All you need to start is a question. Okay, so now we're here with our amazing science expert, Mark, and it's time for an experiment. But before we start, of course you guys watching can try these too, but make sure you're with a teacher or an adult while you're doing them. Hello, Mark. Hey, guys. So, Mark, what exactly are we doing today? Well, we've just learned how important it is to reuse and recycle our waste. That process involves lots of different types of energy changing from one form to another. So I thought we'd make a contraption that also works by transforming energy from one form to the other. Today, we're gonna make a catapult. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> on front of you, you have everything you need. You have some lollipop sticks, some elastic bands, and a spoon. That's all you need to make your catapult. Are uh, we ready? What about these marshmallows? Oh, well, that's our delicious ammo, John. Oh, <laughs> yum. <laughs> okay, let's start building our mini catapults. You're gonna make a stack of lollipop sticks, so take about five or six, just like this, and you're going to tie them together just by wrapping the elastic band around. Nice and tight, just so they don't fall apart. So one on each end will do the trick. You might have to wrap it a few times, so you have a stack that looks just like this. Cool. Done. 
Awesome. Now get one more lollipop stick and you're gonna place it between the last and second last lollipop stick in your stack. So just separate a little bit, put that mm -hmm. lollipop stick through so it makes a cross that looks just like this. Perfect, now we have one more step. We are going to put the launching arm, which is our spoon, onto the rest of the catapult. So place the spoon like this, and you're gonna attach it then with your elastic. So again, wrap it around. You might have to wrap it a few times because you wanna make sure it's nice and tight, it doesn't fly off. A few loops and you're good to go. Here we go and voila. Perfect, awesome. Okay. I'm gonna test my catapult first and I'll show you how it works. So when I press down on the spoon, I'm building up potential energy in the catapult. Potential energy is energy that's stored in something due to its position or state. So when I press down, the potential energy builds up and when I let go, that potential energy converts to kinetic energy, which will send our marshmallow through the sky. <laughs> will we test them? Yes. Okay, the game here is to see who can get it into the cup first. Oh, okay. Challenge accepted. First person to get the marshmallow in the cup wins. Oh, I like it. Okay, <laughs> here we go. And... Glow. Oh, oh. oh. I have a good okay. feeling about this one. Oh! oh. It. Okay, Ooh. increase the potential. We, we. Oh. Oh. Yeah, close. <laughs> Unreal! <laughs> <laughs> if we were trying to get our marshmallows to shoot further, what changes do you think we could make to the catapult? Um, a bigger spoon? Interesting. Well, if we want it to fly further, so we want more kinetic energy, we have to first start with getting more potential energy. So if we added more lollipop sticks under the arm, we could bend the spoon back further, building up more potential energy that can convert into kinetic energy. Now that's super fun, and there's lots of different types of catapults you can make as well that use different mechanisms, but all convert potential energy to kinetic energy. <laughs> Deadly stuff, thanks Mark. Now apparently you've got a bit of a bouncy surprise coming up for us in our super-sized science piece. So why don't you fill everyone in while we head on over and get ready to chat to Mark Robinson. So we're gonna take everything we've just learned about kinetic and potential energy and we're gonna supersize it. I'm gonna put Clara and John's knowledge of waste to the test. They're gonna have to sort out rubbish while on a bouncy castle while also attached to a bungee cord. Do you think they'll be able to put the rubbish in the right bin? Mm -hmm. Make sure to stay tuned and find out. This is gonna be fun. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, here at ESB Science Plus, we think science is amazing. And we're not the only people that think that. All over the world, there are loads of people who love science and have really cool jobs to do with science. Yep, and today we are joined by a man who, unlike most people, actually goes out in a storm instead of staying inside. And that's because he's a professional storm chaser. Hi, Mark, how are you? Hi there, how guys are going, guys? I am absolutely happy to be here. And can, if you can believe it, I'm actually out storm chasing right now. I am in my car. Here we go. Oh, fantastic. Now, Mark, first things first, what is a storm chaser? Well, a storm chaser is somebody that uh, quite literally goes and pursues severe weather. And that doesn't necessarily mean just tornadoes or uh, just thunderstorms. I have been out in almost every kind of weather you can imagine. I've been out in uh, thunderstorms. I've been chased by tornadoes. I've been in the middle of 23 different hurricanes. That sounds absolutely incredible, Mark. Now, tell me, what is the best part of your job? <laughs> the best part of my job is getting to travel and see things that most people will never get a chance to see. I've stood beside lava lakes as the lava is boiling and just and incredible things. I've, I've had to dodge lava bombs as they drop around me. And I get the chance to get a different perspective on, you know, living on this planet that, uh, that we all sort of inhabit. And I think that's one of the best things about my job. Wow, that's incredible. Now, Mark, what I want to know is, have you ever been close to being hit by lightning? 
Uh, absolutely been close to being hit by lightning more than once. That is actually the second largest danger that any storm chaser faces. But because I'm inside the car right now, I'm actually incredibly safe from lightning. And it's not the rubber tires. It's actually something we call the Faraday cage effect. So if a lightning was to strike the car, it actually wants to travel around the outside of the vehicle rather than through the vehicle itself. But I can tell you the closest I've ever been and I was inside the car was about, I'm gonna say about three meters away. Um, and that is so loud and so bright it is, there's no rumble of thunder. All there is a flash and the loudest bang you have ever heard. Unbelievable. So Mark, ESP Science Blast is all about asking questions about the world around us. So I suppose, what questions did you ask when you were younger? Oh, I always wondered about how does it work? Um, why does it do that? Uh, how can I go and see that? <laughs> you know, there wasn't specific science questions that I had. It was more like, I want to know more about this world. And that has never stopped. Like one of the things that I've found out, the more I know, the more I realize that I don't know. So that for me is what I would ask myself as a, as a kid, is those big questions. Now, speaking of questions, Mark, we actually have some amazing questions sent in to us from children. So first up is Anya. How long does it take for a tornado to fully appear? Oh, that is a tricky question because sometimes you can't see the tornado when it's actually happening. All that a tornado is, is a rotating or spinning column of air. Most tornadoes are on the ground, so actually occurring for an average of about 10 minutes, that's it. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay, next up is Zeth. Have you ever been hit by flying debris during a tornado? I have never been hit by flying debris by a tornado. However, I have been hit by some small pieces of debris uh, in hurricanes. The thing though is we're always very careful. We try so hard to make sure that we are as safe as possible. So we really don't want to get hit with flying debris. It still sounds pretty scary to me. <laughs> Next question we have comes in from Emily. What are the biggest waves you have seen working as a storm hunter and where? Well, the biggest waves I have ever seen is here in Canada, and that's Newfoundland. We were standing on a cliff, I'm gonna say they're 150 feet tall, and then the waves would then jump 50 feet beyond us. So we're talking about, you know, 200 foot waves by the time they hit. Definitely a day to leave the surfboards in the car. Well, Mark, it has been so amazing speaking to you and finding out all about storms and your job as a storm chaser. Thank you so much for joining us here at ESB Science Blast. Oh, it's been a pleasure for me too. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. What a cool job. Mark is another great example of how asking questions and being curious about the world around you when you're younger means that you could end up being a storm chaser too. Of course, chasing storms isn't for everyone but there's a good chance that science is behind whatever it is that you are interested in. Right, it's time to go outside and catch up with Mark, but before we do, what we are about to do should not be tried at home. Ready, John? Let's go. Hey. What's it? Mark, why are we dressed like this? Well, today we're here at the RDS and we have a challenge for you. Ooh, I love challenges. Now, remember we learned about the importance of recycling and reusing our waste? Yeah. And we learned about different forms of energy and how they can be converted from one form to the other. Yeah. Well, I present to thee Waste Bingey Run. Bingey Run? Exactly. Both of you will be our waste collectors. You have to get as much rubbish as you can from the top of your lane into the correct bin at the bottom of your lane. Yep, seems fairly straightforward. Oh, not so much. Not only will you be on a bouncy castle, which is pretty tricky in itself, mm -hmm. you'll also be tied to a bungee cord. A uh, what? A bungee cord. As you run, your kinetic energy will be converted into the potential energy in the bungee cord. The more potential energy that builds up, the more you'll be pulled back with that potential energy converting back to kinetic energy. I see. Oh. Who'd like to go first? 
Oh, oh, me, me, me. <laughs> okay, off you go. <laughs> okay, John, at your feet, you have an assortment of waste. There's some food waste and some recyclable waste. It's your job to sort it out and put it in the correct bin. Understand? Yes. Okay, but before we begin, who do you think is going to get the most rubbish in the right bin? Me, obviously. This guy right here. Okay, I think we're ready. In three, two, one, go! <laughs> 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 you can see when the guys are running, their kinetic energy is being converted into potential energy in the elastic. The more it's stretched, the more potential energy that builds up in the bungee cord. Then it becomes strong enough to pull them all the way back, converting that potential energy into kinetic energy, whether they like it or not. Four, Four three, three, two, two one, one, stop! stop. Mark, this recycling stuff is a little bit harder than it looks. Well, uh, you got um, two in the bin. Yay. OK, Clara, it's your turn now. You have two to beat. OK, I think I can do that. OK. Let's do it. Are you ready? Yep. OK, in three, two, one, go! Go, 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 go! go. Oh! Okay, Clara, we can stop it. It's just a whole pocket. That's shady, no way, man. That's a lot when we recycle and reuse our waste, we can reuse some of the energy that went into making it and reuse it for other purposes, producing less pollution, which is better for the environment. Oh, my shoes fell off! <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, hang! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Clara, how are you feeling? Oh, that was so difficult. You got three pieces of rubbish in the right bin. Yes! Okay. I am the champion! OK, off you get. Woo! Well, that was an exhausting way of sorting out the rubbish. Yeah, I'm learning about changes in energy. Well, it looks like we have a bit of rubbish to clean up here. Ah, loser, to the cleaning up. Oh, no, no, that's not fair. Whoa, I demand whoa, whoa, a recount. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that is all from us here at ESP Science Blast TV for today. We had a great time discovering where our waste goes and how storms are made. But there are still a lot of questions to investigate, like, why do we yawn? Why is the sky blue? And what did come first, the chicken or the egg? That's right. And remember, science is all around us. So if you've been inspired by anything you've seen here today and you want to investigate your own questions, why not sign up to ESB Science Blast at esbscienceblast.com. You could do a class investigation and we'll assign you your very own scientist to give you feedback on your investigations. So from all of us here at the RDS, we want to say a big thank you to all of our sponsors and our title sponsor, ESB, who help every year to make ESB Science Blast happen. Bye! Bye.